Okay, now this is one large stone in the temple. It weighs about 600 tons. Now, it's hard to imagine in the old days, they did not have machines. How did they move this large stone? How did they move it? It's very hard to imagine how they did it. But this is one large stone. Okay, now, this is another prophecy about the killing of the baby boys in uh, and around Bethlehem. Genesis 35, 19. So, so you have to write down the Bible verses so you can study it yourself. Okay? Uh, so get a pen and write it down. Genesis 35, 19. So Rachel died. And I want to say this. You want to be able to explain to, to people. Pastors and leaders, and we should train people so that they remember this uh, passages and then they can tell people uh, so this first prophecy was uh, about Jesus crucifixion was Psalm 22 verse 14 Psalm 22 verse 14 and then Daniel 9 24 to 26 is about the 69 weeks Daniel 9 so you can remember Daniel 9 and Psalm 22 and then here is Genesis 35, 19. Now, this is not the prophecy here. This is what happened. So Rachel died. Rachel is the wife of Jacob. And Jacob, was ch his name was changed by God to Israel. Israel, the name means to wrestle with God. Like Jacob wrestled with God. Now, Israel really wrestled with God all these years. Israel did not obey God easily. They, Israel wrestled with God, struggled with God. So Israel means struggle or wrestle with God. And so Rachel was the wife of Jacob who was called Israel. And Jacob has, you know, a wrestle with the angel of the Lord. Now, angel of the Lord doesn't mean an angel. It's God. It's Christ appearing in the Old Testament time. So Rachel died when he gave birth to um, Jonathan. Um, uh, Benjamin, I'm sorry. Benjamin. Benjamin. Rachel gave birth to Benjamin and then she died and was buried on the way to Ephra. Ephra, that is Bethlehem. And then 1300 years later, Jeremiah 31 15, Jeremiah prophesied this Thus says the Lord, a voice was heard in Ramah. Ramah is also the district of, Beth, uh, of Bethlehem. Lamentation and bitter weeping. So there is crying and deeper weeping. Rachel weeping for her, weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted for her children because they are no more. Now, Rachel had already died for 1300 years. 1300 years, Rachel was buried. Now, imagine this. You know, your ancestor 1300 years before now, would you say that your ancestor is crying? You won't say that because he's already died for 1300 years. But Rachel died for 1300 years and then Jeremiah prophesied that. That there was crying in Ramah in Bethlehem. Bitter uh, weeping and Rachel was weeping for her children. Now here Rachel represents the mother of Israel because you know uh, her husband is Jacob and is called Israel and then outcome from Jacob are the children of Israel so all the children of Israel the, the baby boys were killed so Rachel was buried on the way to Bethlehem that she happened to die there she just happened to die there and then Jacob built a tomb for her and now this tomb I know of course it's not the original one that they have a, built a house there already. I have been there too. 
Okay, and then so in Rama there was lamentation because Rachel was weeping. And then this prophecy is very strange because uh, Rachel had already died for 1300 years. And she refused to be comforted for her children because they are no more, that the children have died. And then this was fulfilled in Matthew 2.16. Then Herod put to death all the male children who were in Bethlehem and in all the districts. So Herod put to death all the male children who were in Bethlehem and in all its districts from two years old and under according to the time which he had determined from the wise men. So he heard from the wise men that it has been a while that they've been traveling. So it's less than two years. So he killed all the baby boys under two years old. Then was fulfilled what was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet saying, a voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation, weeping, and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted because they are no more. So this prophecy is fulfilled later when Jesus was born in Matthew 2.16. So first, Rachel, was, Rachel died and was buried near Bethlehem, and then Jacob put a tomb there for her. And then in Jeremiah uh, 31, 15, that was 13 years, 1300 years after Rachel died, he said that Rachel would cry. So it's a figurative language because Rachel was buried there. It's like Rachel from her tomb saw all the baby boys killed, the children killed, they are no more, and then she is crying. So this is a figurative language, a figurative prophecy. So Rachel was the mother of Israel and she was buried on the way to Bethlehem in about 1900 BC. In about 600, 600 BC, so that's 1300 years later. Now in BC you count back, you know, count back. So 1900 BC is uh, in, in the past more, in ancient times, and then 600 BC is closer to now. So it's 1300 years between, in between. Jeremiah prophesied that Rachel will weep for her children because they were no more. At, Jer at Jeremiah's time, Rachel had died for 1300 years already. Humanly speaking, it does not make sense for him to say that Rachel would cry because her children are no more. It doesn't make sense because Rachel had already died for 1300 years. So, but when Herod the Great killed the baby boys, in and around Bethlehem, and Rachel's tomb was on the way to Bethlehem, Rachel weeping for her children is symbolical of her being the mother of Israel, weeping for all the baby boys killed in Bethlehem. So this is a, a figurative language saying Rachel weeping for her children is symbolical of that she is the mother of Israel and she's crying because all the baby boys were killed in Bethlehem. So humanly speaking, Jeremiah would not want to prophesy about Rachel weeping for the babies, you know, humanly speaking. When Jeremiah heard this from God, okay, write down, Rachel weeping for her children because the children are no more. And Jeremiah would wonder, Rachel had already died for 1300 years. Oh God, why do you want me to write down that Rachel crying? So he would not understand. But God told him just to write. He did not understand. He might understand if God told him that one day the baby's boys there will be killed. That maybe he will know, but maybe he doesn't know. So, humanly speaking, he doesn't want to prophesy about Rachel weeping because it does not make sense. Rachel was buried on the way to Bethlehem and she was the mother of Israel. So this prophecy makes sense and is very accurate when it's fulfilled by Herod the Great killing the baby there. So this is very, uh, is a hidden mouth prophecy. You just look at the prophecy, you don't understand it. You just look at Jeremiah, it does, you don't understand it. But when you understand that it's uh, Rachel represents the mother of Israel, then she saw all the baby boys killed on the way to Jerusalem, uh, Bethlehem, then it makes sense. This shows that God knows 
God knows what will happen in the future, and He can prophesy in a way that seems to be illogical, and yet it is fulfilled accurately. It seems illogical, but it's fulfilled accurately. Okay, now here, let me see. Okay, now uh, we have about 20 minutes. I'm going to continue, and then you'll have the lunch, okay? So the second proof that the Bible is God's Word, how the Bible talk about recent scientific findings proves the Bible is God's Word. There are words in the Bible that is the sci scientists find that it's true in modern science. But in the past, they did not have this modern day science. But the Bible already talked about this. Okay? Job 26 7. Job 26 7. He stretches out the north, out the north over empty space. He hangs the earth on nothing. Now, this is very strange. God hangs the earth on nothing because in all ancient thinking, People think the earth is flat. And then, so the earth is resting on something solid. That's what most people think. But the Bible said that God hangs the earth on nothing. It doesn't make sense. How can the earth, which is so solid, so firm, to be hanging on nothing? But this is true that the earth is hanging on nothing in, in vacuum, in space. In Isaiah 44, 40, 22, 40, 22. So you can write these verses down. It is He who sits above the circle of the earth. So God sits above the circle of the earth. So the earth is like a circle. It's round. Now most people think the earth is flat. It's not round, but Isaiah says that it's the circle. It's a circle. The earth is a circle. All ancient people think that the earth is flat and sitting on something solid. Job said that the earth is hanging on nothing. It's hanging on nothing. And this does not make sense to the people in ancient times. It does not make sense. How can the earth be hanging on nothing? So Isaiah said that the earth is like a circle instead of being flat. So this shows that it's God. Only God knows this because other people think that the earth is just flat and won't, won't think that it's hanging on nothing. Okay, So this is a very interesting thing that the Bible says is scientific. And then here is something about cell phones. It's fulfilled in cell phones. Job 38-35. Can you send out lightnings that they may go and say to you, here we are? So can we send out lightnings and then say to you this message, here we are? In the ancient times, there is no household electricity. But there is electricity in heaven. The lightning is electricity. So uh, God already said that. Can you send out electricity and tell people there you are? And this doesn't make sense. But now, you know, even uh, 100 years before now, it doesn't make sense. But now we have cell phones. And cell phones use electricity. It's the same electricity as in lightning. But of course, it's very weak electricity. Electricity, very weak compared to the lightning. So in ancient times, there was no commercial electricity. God uses lightning to describe electricity. Lightning are made of electricity. So lightning has electricity there. It's very powerful electricity. Today, we can use electricity in cell phones to send out messages to people. And many people send messages like, here we are on this certain street. So when you are calling someone and you're coming to his home or coming to church, you say, I'm on my way. I'm coming to this street now. I'm almost there. So we'll tell people. So this is uh, one thing many people say on a cell phone. It's very interesting. How does God, 
how did God know that one day people will tell each other and say, yeah, I'm here. That it doesn't make sense. But now we always, you know, this is one thing we say many times on the cell phone. I'm here, I'm on the street, I'm, I just came to the airport. So we, we say something like this. Job could say something that agrees with te te uh, technological equipment today. So the technological equipment today that Job already knew, he did not know, he did not understand this. He just wrote down what God told him to write down. Now, God might tell him, but he might not know, he might know if God tells him that people can use electricity to send out messages. So this is another proof that the Bible is God's Word. So I hope that we we'll all say that, uh, yes, the Bible is God's Word. And also, another proof that God is, uh, the Bible is God's Word is we can experience the work of the Holy Spirit as the Bible describes. Now the first part today we talk about uh, prophecy. And the second part is about um, the science, the scientific things the Bible talks about matches the scientific finding of today. And then number three here, the third thing is, we can experience the work of God, the Holy Spirit, as described in the Bible. There are different religions. Now, some religions can experience power, but they experience the power of the evil spirit. When people meditate, when people contact evil spirit, they worship Satan, they can have some power. But that power destroys them. Many people said online, you can, you can see, uh, read this, uh, you can hear this messages on uh, YouTube. There are many people, they contact evil spirit, and then the evil spirit at the beginning say, you know, I'm going to make you rich, I, I'm going to help you. But later, the evil spirit try to make the person kill himself and tell this person you are useless, you have to die, uh, everybody hates you. So the evil spirit comes to people, at first they might feel good, but after a while they find that they become more and more miserable and unhappy and they have a suicidal tendency. But with the Holy Spirit, when we experience the Holy Spirit, it's always joyful and peaceful. So we can experience the work of the Holy Spirit by peace. John 14, 27, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. So the Holy Spirit will give, give us peace. So now many people believe in Jesus and you can see these testimonies. Many Jews and also many people of different religions and then they look for God and then they pray to God and then suddenly one day some people experience this power of God come to them. They experience a great peace and great love. And they say, God is so wonderful, I can experience His peace and His love. And the burdens removed, Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. So come to me, all you who, are, uh, labor, who labor and are heavy laden, that you have a lot of burdens, come to me and I'll give you rest. So Jesus can give us rest give us peace, take away the burdens. And then body in rest and comfort. It's the body too. So not only the soul with comfort, also the body. Psalm 16, 9. Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh will also rest in hope. So my body, my flesh will rest in hope that I'll feel comfort. The more we pray to God and put down our burdens, the more we'll feel peaceful will feel comfort to the body. And then love, Romans 5.5, 5, because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. So the love of God has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. So we can experience this to show that the Bible is God's Word. Our experience of the Holy Spirit shows that, proves that the Bible is God's Word. When people read the Buddhist uh, scripture, when people follow other religions, they don't have this peace and love and motivation and strength and care for other people. And also here, 
inner healing. Isaiah 61 1. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. So many people who are sad, who are hurt, they can pray to God and then they can experience the comfort, the healing of the hurts in the past. Now, if you are hurt, you pray to God, Lord, you're loving me. I love you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're so wonderful. You're so wonderful. When we pray more, then His presence will come to comfort us. And then physical healing. Isaiah 55, 53.5 By His stripes, it should be separated. His stripes, we are healed, that we can be healed. And then demons driven out. Mark 16, 17, In my name they will cast out demons. So in these ways we know that it's the Holy Spirit that we experience, that we experience the Holy Spirit. And then D, and then proof. Many people experience evil spirit, and this proves that evil spirit are real. Christians have the ability to drive out demons in Jesus' name, proves that Jesus is God. Now in this world, there are two spirit, two sources of spirit. One is the Holy Spirit, another is the evil spirit. And there are many people who experience the evil spirit by worshiping Satan, by meditating, uh, transcendental meditation, or by other ways. They, they have contact with evil spirit. And evil spirit are real. And evil spirit talk to people. It's not just a force, it's talking to people. And the Holy Spirit also talk to us. Many people who practice transcendental meditation, witchcraft, contact with evil spirit, voodoo, Satanism, and many other occult practices have testified the reality of evil spirits. There are many online testimonies of people experiencing evil spirits. So there are people who, who meditate and then the soul leaves the body. And then they found that there are evil spirits around them. And then uh, later they are overcome by this evil spirit and some of these people left uh, the transcendental meditation and believe in Jesus. Number two, the presence of evil spirit proves the reality of God because this beautiful and wonderful world cannot be created by evil spirits. That there are evil spirit proves that there must be a good God because evil spirit is very wicked and evil. The wicked evil spirit cannot create babies who are so lovely and flowers and trees that are so beautiful. Evil spirit only create, they don't create, they only make things worse. They only destroy things. They only create negative things, do negative things. But this world is so wonderful. The babies of human and babies of many animals are very cute and interesting. Only when they grow up that people learn you know, that they have all sinful ways and then they become wicked. And, uh, but I mean, of course, all people are born with sins. But when they are babies, they are still more innocent. And they are not so polluted by sins yet. They, their behavior is not so polluted by sins. And you can see that they're very lovely and uh, more innocent and uh, more pure. And Christians can drive out evil spirit in Jesus' name, proves that Jesus is God and has authority over demons. So that there is a distinction between evil spirit and the Holy Spirit. Now there are some people who accuse, people who are filled with Holy Spirit, that they accuse us that we have evil spirit. But evil spirit destroy people and tell people to commit suicide and to be uh, unhappy about themselves. But, and also, we'll, you know, eventually these people feel very unhappy and sad but, uh, and suicidal. But for us who experience the Holy Spirit, we have peace and love and we have motivation to serve God and we have uh, you know, we want to obey God. All this shows that we have the Holy Spirit, not evil spirit. So it's a work of Satan to cheat many people that many Christians think that the infilling of the Holy Spirit is evil spirit, that they think that and they miss this great gift. Okay, now this is another proof, E. Many people died and came back to life and could describe things that happened after they died. 
This proves that we have souls. So many people die and came back to life and they can describe things that happen after they die. So they said, oh, the doctor came in and someone tried to uh, resuscitate me and some people were talking in the room or the doctors was talking in the room and they were doing certain things to my body. So they can describe this, proving that after they died, proving that when they died, they did not disappear. When we die, our soul leaves the body. And these people, they, they say, I can look at the doctors and look at my body from this, uh, the ceiling. I'm above myself. I look at myself and look at the doctors and the people who come in the room. So the soul leaves the body and then leaves the house. And sometimes they go to nearby places and then they describe what happened to them. Uh, I mean, to the, to the body and to other people. They can describe it. shows that we do have souls. When we die, we don't disappear. And many people testify they went to heaven or hell and their lives are greatly changed. So their life are changed and when they go went to heaven or hell, and they went to heaven and they saw Jesus and they're very, very happy and they want to believe in Jesus. And some people went to hell and they said, hell is terrible. I don't want to go to hell anymore. I want to believe in Jesus. And many of these people went to hell and came back. It's, uh, sometimes it's, they were just resuscitated at a time. Sometimes it's, they, they have heard Jesus. They heard about Jesus and then they cry out to Jesus. Jesus, save me. Jesus, save me out of this place. And then they cry out to Jesus. And then some people said a light came in and took them out. And then they came back to the body or took them to heaven. So many people have this experience. And you can find these uh, uh, testimonies online. And the lives are greatly changed. Some of these experiences proved prove that God, heaven, and hell are real. Now, uh, these experiences, uh, because some of them, they describe very clearly what happened to the body and what happened this, when they saw people uh, in heaven. I know someone who prayed and then very often she went to heaven when she prays. Actually, later, every time she prays, she goes to heaven. And then she... Uh, she said that she saw people in heaven and then these people, they are Christians who died and told her something and then she told the family members and the family members said, you must have seen them, you must have gone to heaven. One of these stories was this woman preacher, you know, she prays a lot and she went to heaven a lot. And then uh, there was a Christian who died and she went to the uh, hus hospital where he died. He was, she was called there. So she went there. And then the moment she arrived, she prayed, she saw this man's soul and then two angels sitting next to him. And then this man said to her, tell my family member, don't cry for me. I'm very happy now. And then secondly, tell my daughter, I'm very happy with her marriage. And so this woman preacher told the family, don't cry. He's very happy. He has two angels beside him. And then also tell the uh, daughter, your father said he's very happy with your marriage. And then the, and then the, uh, the daughter said, wow, you must have seen him because that's what he said to us, said, said to me many times. So I know that this is true and, and you have never heard it, but now you have heard it from him. So it, you must have seen him. And also she saw him in heaven later in another time. She saw him in heaven. And then he was eating the fruits in heaven. And then he said to her, even if you give me a thousand years on earth, I will not go back to earth. And then she told her daughter again, okay, your father was eating very happy, eating fruits, and he has fruits in both his hands. And then he said, even if you give me a thousand years on earth, I will not go back to earth. And then, the daughter said, wow, that's the way my father talks. He talks like that all the time. He said, if you give me a thousand years, I will not do this. I, I do this, you know, I, if you give me a thousand years to live, I will not do this, you know. So it shows that it's, that this woman preacher really saw him there. 
And then another person uh, that who serves God, a man who serves God with this woman preacher's mother. The woman preacher's mother is also a, a, a preacher. And then there is a couple who serves God with her. And this husband died and went to heaven. And then this woman preacher, uh, we can call her Miss uh, Wong. Okay, Miss Wong. So uh, Minister Wong, Ministress Wong. And uh, she saw this uh, man and he said to her, tell my wife be sure to serve God more and pray more because it really is important. It counts in heaven. It's very important to serve God more and pray more. So I encourage you all to pray more and to serve God more. And then he said to her, your mother really likes you very much. Don't think that she doesn't like you. He, she always tells us about how she is proud of you. Because this uh, Wong, Miss uh, Ministress Wong, she, her mother never told her that, that her mother likes her. And she doesn't, you know, she did thinks that her mother doesn't like her. And so she, she always thought her mother, you know, because uh, many Chinese uh, parents always criticize the children instead of appreciating them. So this woman preacher never heard a word appreciation, a word of appreciation from the mother. And then she thinks that the mother doesn't like her. But then this man said to her, don't misunderstand your mother. Your mother is very happy with you. He, she told us about you and she's proud of you all the time. She just didn't tell you. Now that's many Chinese do. They don't tell the children. They tell, tell someone else. So this woman preacher came back and asked the wife, is that true? And the wife says, yes, that's true. And also asked the mother and she said, also this is true. So this proves that she really saw these people. And then a third thing, Jesus told this woman preacher to pray for his family because his ancestor has killed many people. And so she wondered what is, this is. So she went back and asked her mother. And the mother said, yes, that's true. Your great grandfather was a, uh, a person who betrayed the Chinese to the Japanese. When the Japanese attacked, you know, uh, invade China, that her great grandfather was a betrayer who helped the Japanese. The Japanese gave him a gun and he sometimes went out at night and killed people or steal from people or do bad things. And so he has killed many people. And so this woman preacher now knew that Jesus told her the fact that her an ancestor has killed many people because most people don't kill people. Most people uh, don't have the experience of killing people. So these experiences tell us that, now this is a person that I know personally, and I have put her videos, but this is in Chinese. I put her videos online. So it shows that heaven is real. This experiences that is provable shows that heaven is real. And also, uh, you might have heard, there's a book called Heaven is Real. There's a little boy, about four years old, he died. Three or four years old, he died. And then he died and went to heaven. And then he saw a girl. And this girl hugged him many times. And this girl says, I'm your sister who died in your mother's womb uh, before she was born. So this girl told him that. And also he saw his great-grandfather. And his great-grandfather told him something about him and his father. So his great-grandfather told this baby boy about something about his father. So he came back. Now he did not intentionally tell the, the parents. One day he was hopping around and just suddenly say, I have another sister. And the mother said, what do you mean you have another sister? You have one sister. He said, I have another sister. He died in your womb. And the mother said, how do you know? 
And he said, I went to heaven and saw her, and she hugged me many times. And also, he saw the great-grandfather, and then the, the father searched for the picture, because the great-grandfather died before the baby boy was born. But the great-grandfather has experiences with his father. So there are stories with his father, and this baby boy tell, told his father about what the great-grandfather uh, told about his father. And then the great grand, uh, the, the father show him pictures, and then he can recognize this is uh, my great grandfather. So this proves that he knew things that he did not ordinarily know, ordinarily know. That it proves that he really went to heaven. So there are many proofs that heaven is real, and people have souls. So now sometimes for some people, it's easier to start evangelism talking about this that there are many stories and you can if you have a cell phone you can download uh, or, or keep the link of some of these videos and you can tell people look at this video and it shows you that uh, that you know this person died and he can see what happened around him so it shows that uh, we have a soul and we don't disappear after we die and there are people who go to heaven and go to hell so you can look for Heaven is real. Look for this uh, testimony. And there is a book and a, a, a movie about it too. So this we can use to tell people that God is real and believe in Jesus and follow Jesus. Not just believe, but believe and follow Jesus and you have eternal life. But many people, uh, you know, didn't know this. So we want to tell people and then tell them that Jesus died for them and you can have eternal life when you repent of your sin and trust in Jesus as our Savior. So this is something that might interest people. So you can, we can talk to people about this reality or talk to people about the reality of experiencing the Holy Spirit. We can experience the Holy Spirit. We can experience His presence, His love and His freedom, His joy, His healing and drive out the demons. And also some people can go to heaven and then it's describe different things in heaven and how wonderful it is and how loving God is and there are different videos I can send you links of these videos that you can watch okay so some of these people who died went to heaven and saw Christians who died before them and they could later describe certain things about these Christians who died before them so they could describe these Christians who died already which they did not know beforehand this proves that they really saw the Christians who died before them and proves that Christians do go to heaven. And some people who died went to hell. Their, ch their changed life supports that they really went to hell. And hell is terrible. There is one uh, testimony called 23 Minutes in Hell. You can search on YouTube and you can find 23 Minutes in Hell. 23 Minutes in Hell is about a Christian who was taken to hell. God took him to hell to let him describe to the people how terrible hell is. And he said all the suffering on earth is multiplied thousands of times in hell. So when we feel pain, it's thousands of times stronger. You know, if, you know, if a, you know, imagine a truck runs over your feet it will be very painful when the wheel go over your feet. It will be very painful. But the pain in hell is thousands of times stronger than this. And the heat of the fire is thousands of times stronger than when you put your hand in the stove. We don't put a hand in the stove. But in hell, when you are in a fire, you don't disappear. People still continue to live and suffer. And Jesus said, you know, that there will be fire that's unquenchable and then there will be uh, uh, bugs that don't die. Now these bugs are not butterflies, just fly around you. These bugs will be bugs that bite you. So in hell, and these bugs could be evil spirit, that, that we could be hurt by the evil spirit in hell. So hell is painful. And this man described he needs to breathe in hell, but there is no air. It's, it's like this, he said, trying to breathe, but he cannot breathe. 
He cannot breathe, and he's very tired. But he's no, he has no strength. But he, he still continues to live. He has totally no strength, and he's tortured by the demons. Now, this is just for uh, reference. He said that the demons pull out his arm, swing him, and hit him on the wall, and then crush him, and then he, his body will restore, and then the demons will continue to torture him in different ways. Imagine that this lasts forever and ever. It's terrible. So there is pain in hell because of the fire and also because the demons are there and the demons are angry and they want to torture people. Now this is for reference. The Bible doesn't say that the demons would torture people. But the Bible does say that the bugs there will not die. So I hope that we all you know, we can witness to people, but when we witness to people, we don't, don't just tell them how first. We want to tell them about God's love. God loves you. That's what attracts people to God, that we can experience His love and comfort. We might not experience love from people sometimes. They might not experience love from the family. They might have a lot of burdens and pressure. But God loves them. When you come to God, you can have eternal life and you can have the peace and the love of God. You can experience His love. When you praise Him and worship Him, you can experience His love more and more. And you will be changed by His love and you feel more joyful and strengthened by God and you enjoy life. And in heaven, is millions times stronger than on earth. It's, you can experience God's love and joy millions times stronger than on earth on earth but we can experience him more and more today too that when we love god more we can experience his love and joy and peace hallelujah the more you love god from your heart the more you feel love flows in your heart thank you jesus and you can feel love flows in your heart so god is very wonderful so we can tell people in witnessing i hope we really you know this is this is the last days. These are the last days. The coronavirus is very, is very serious problem. It's causing financial problem in many countries. Many countries already have financial problem, and this will make it worse. And the hearts of many people are troubled, and they're angry, they're frustrated, they're disappointed, dis in despair. So many people are suffering, but God can give us hope. He can give us eternal life. We can be sure of eternal life and sure of help on earth. Christians can experience help on earth. Christ, Non-Christian, because they are not connected God, to God, they can experience that. Christians, when we need jobs, when we need income, we need food, we can trust in God and pray to God. And also, of course, we want to do our responsibilities. We want to find jobs. We want to work hard. We want to ask God to help us to be a good worker and give us wisdom how to earn money to support ourselves and also to give offerings to God. So we want to learn uh, you know, to maintain our, ourselves in godly ways and we trust in God and He will provide for Christians who love God. That you know, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard and, he heard and the human hearts have not thought of, the human mind has not thought of the things that God has prepared for us. So when we trust in God, God will provide for us even in the midst of the, of the uh, virus problem. So I hope that we all will trust in Jesus and have joy. You know, when you have joy and love and tell people about Jesus, then people will want to believe in Jesus. We don't pressure people to believe in Jesus. We tell them, I have the joy of the Lord. I have the peace of the Lord. I feel so happy. I feel so joyful because God loves me. God is with me all the time. I can experience Him. And you can experience Him too. And there are many people who die and went to heaven and their soul leave the body. And there are many scientific studies. Now, I want to say this. There are many scientific studies. There are many, many people who did the study. They study on thousands and thousands of people, interview them, people who died and came back to life because there are many people who are resuscitated in hospitals. And they interview them, ask them what happened. And they, uh, they, they tell the story about the same. They said that they heard that they were declared dead. And they said, I'm, I'm not dead, I can hear them. But when they want to talk, they cannot talk. 
And then they feel that they go through a tunnel. And then they get, can f hear sounds like bells. And then they leave the body. And then they found that they were floating above the body. And then they leave the body and go up some people to heaven and some people to hell. And some people are tortured by the demons. And when they go to hell, some people said they fell down to hell. It's painful. And then they were suffering in a great heat and terrible smell in hell. And the pain is thousands of times stronger than on earth. So suicide is never the, a way to solve problems. Never commit suicide. And always tell people in God there is love and joy and provision. And we, when we love God, we can enjoy Him. We can experience His love and we can experience His help. Okay? And so we'll, we'll stop here now and uh, we'll, we'll conclude with a short prayer. Oh Lord Jesus, we thank you because you're a wonderful God. You're a wonderful God. You love us very much and you are real. We can know from the Bible that the Bible has many proofs. The Bible has prophecies. The Bible talks about things that the scientists found that is true today. That's scientific facts from the Bible. And also we can experience the Holy Spirit. And also uh, there are demons. People can experience demons. And, uh, and then also we can drive out demons with, uh, with the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. And also that there are people who die and then they can saw what happened to the body and around them after they died. And also some people go to heaven and hell and then, and then what they saw something uh, that they can report and prove that they have really gone to heaven. So this shows that God is real and heaven is real and hell is real. So help us to believe in you and also tell people about Jesus. And, tell, and also be diligent to serve you because what we do for you, you always remember, you, you reward us and you will be blessed on this, in this life and in the future. We'll be blessed by you in this life and in the future. Lord, help us to love you more and to worship you and obey you and be joyful when we serve you we serve with joy we don't serve under pressure we're joyful because god is happy with anything we do we, if we have done anything wrong we ask god to forgive us and god is very happy to forgive us if we have not done well we ask god to forgive us and god is happy to forgive us and then whenever we do any little things even when we give a cup of cold water to someone because of Jesus, then God will reward us. So anything we do for Jesus, if we tell people about Jesus, God is very happy and He will reward us. So we want to serve you more and more. And uh, the more we serve you, the more you'll pl be pleased with us and you bless us and you provide for us things we have never imagined when we love you. Thank you, Lord. Please help us to love you more and to serve you with zeal and with honesty with holiness that we don't fall in sin we don't we don't commit sins when we know that sins will separate us from god help us to love you and obey you thank you father you are so wonderful thank you father we want to serve you and love you all the days of our life hallelujah